The beauty of Newfoundland was unmistakable, especially in the fall, when the rolling hills were a mosaic of reds and yellows and shades of green. The smell in the air was death. The dead and decaying foliage, combined with the last remnants of Indian summer, the ever-present standing water of a place that was never really dry, and the overall impression to the uninitiated visitor who had not studied the place extensively was that of a forgotten wilderness stuck in a bygone era. For Keenan Fitzpatrick, Fitz to all that knew him, it all started last January, when he attended the annual sportsman convention in his hometown of Reno, Nevada. He had gone there for the past dozen years to gawk at all the displays of trophy animals and to speak with outfitters from around the world. He had often considered spending the money to go on safari in Africa or to fish the crystal-clear streams of Patagonia, but his most exotic adventure prior to this year was a fishing trip on Vancouver Island a few years ago. As the sheriff of the second-largest county in Nevada, it had been almost impossible for Fitz to take the time off. Something always came up. After he lost the election last November, that wasn't a problem. Yet he still had not shelled out the exorbitant fee for a moose hunt to Newfoundland. No, he had won this adventure in a raffle for five bucks, everything included from the plane ticket to the hunting license to the seven days of lodging and six days of one-on-one -on -one guiding for a trophy moose. He had flown all day across the continent, stayed the night in the only motel in Deer Lake, Newfoundland, an outpost in a wilderness whose sole purpose seemed to be to provide a stopover to hunters and those heading into Grossmore National Park, a World Heritage Site visited too infrequently due to its remote location. Then a representative of the outfitter had plucked Fitz and a couple other people from their rooms at Dark Thirty, piled all of their gear into the back of a black suburban, and then headed south faster than the roads should have allowed the driver smoking one cigarette after the next, saying not a single word for miles, and trying his best to keep from hitting suicidal caribou and moose crossing the road. Fitz thought their trip might be cut short by either death by moose or careening off the road like a missile. He kept looking for any sign of law enforcement, but the place was as desolate as some of the roads in eastern Nevada. The driver was an older man, probably in his mid-fifties, like Fitz, but he had heard that the age of Newfies was hard to discern since many had lived hard lives. So, Fitz said, how many moose have you hit so far? The driver let out a slight smirk behind his cigarette, his weathered skin looking like it might rip apart with the effort. Only a couple of all eats the same. The words came out in a jumble, as if one. And you're still alive, Fitz said. Impressive. By the way, my name is Fitz. I'd shake your hand and all that, but I think you have your hands full. 